people! Welcome to Blue Dragon Art, where I, the self-proclaimed Blue Dragon, discuss various art topics, primarily indie art comics and art, things like that. I talk a lot about my free webcomic, Dark Horse, which is a not-safe-for-work post-apocalyptic magical girl fantasy. You can check that out at the links in the description. But I also talk about a lot of different zine projects that I work on and that I want other people to know about so that they can participate or check it out if they're interested. And that's actually what I'm going to be focusing on today. This is a quick vid because in August my partner and I are finally getting married. We were supposed to do this back in 2020 but shit hit the fan. What was going to be kind of a quick easy ceremony has kind of snowballed into slightly bigger plans with like a family road trip. Needless to say, I gotta get videos done, pages done, zine projects done, applications and different stuff done, uh, and then plans like for the wedding. I, I gotta complete all this shit ASAP. So today we're gonna have a quick vid and I'm gonna be talking about colors. In the background, I am coloring the cover for my Dark Horse one-shot on the beach. I discussed that a couple weeks ago if you want to know more about the actual cover itself and, you know, what, what it's referencing. But this is going to be featured in the free summer zine put on by the Aradia Collective. It's going to be Summer in Aradia, and it's going to be pretty cool. That's going to be coming out in August, and I will be sure to do a zine tour and get you all the links if you want to check it out. No charge, so you got nothing to lose. So, because Dark Horse is mainly a black and white comic, like, I do have some color pages and the covers for each chapter and the volume covers are colored, but it's primarily a black and white comic. Something that I started doing for the zine submissions is really going to town trying to learn how to use colors effectively because the comic is black and white. I, I don't know if I said, I maybe said that a little bit backwards. <laughs> But in my first Dark Horse one-shot, I used primarily a single color with different hues, different uh, tints and values, I should say, different values, not hues, but different hues for each page and different values of those hues for each page, if that makes sense. Um, except for one page where I did use two primaries, but again, I was using like different tints and values of those to add like the shading and the highlights and such. In 2022, I played with a pastel color scheme at the beginning of a, a one-shot that I did for the In Dreams Comic Fury zine. And it starts out, you know, very pastel with like pinks and blues, but then it morphs very quickly into like a darker scheme with primarily black and deeply saturated red, and finally like some grays and blues for like, you know, when they're in the tent at the end of it. Last year, I also participated in a 90s themed zine for the Aradia Collective, the, the Aradia Beat, where I really pushed myself to use neon and vibrant colors, along with unrealistic skin tones and stuff to create a super 90s feel, in my humble opinion. And again, this year, I used a wildly saturated color palette for my submission to Comic Fury Zine Psychedelica. Very vibrant colors because, you know, you the whole rainbow and like hallucinations and colors and shit like that. Just really experimenting and trying to do my best to master color and contrast. Contrast is kind of important, at least to me. If there's not enough contrast in an image, which I've been learning, the whole thing can kind of be hard to see as everything just melds together. A tip that I was taught way back in college, I say taught because I didn't really truly understand or start applying it until later years, and arguably I'm still learning it, but uh, this, this kind of trick that we were taught was to essentially set your color mode to grayscale. In fact, we were at first taught to use different tints and shades to demonstrate like an object in black and white and then we moved on to like a single color and then we moved on to like mixing colors and yada yada yada. But if you're working digitally and you've got your picture in your program, you can just completely strip away the color and make it grayscale so that you can see whether or not each individual object is, you know, melding into each other or if the, the image is still clear and understandable for people to see and, and, and read. I was having this conversation actually more recently with a friendly acquaintance from Comic Fury. I need to get back to, the, to, to him. But this method really strips away the noise and all the, all, all the stuff that tends to like distract us when we're trying to use color. It, it takes that away and helps us see the image for what it is. 
and really helps, you know, like make sure that we're on point and making images that are clear and easy to, to see and understand. Um, it also helps, you know, because I know a lot of people who are colorblind, it helps, I think, for some versions of colorblindness because if you've got too many hues that are like the exact same shade and tint, like if it's red and green or there's other types of colorblindness also, there's not just red, red green colorblind, but if you can take away the color and still be able to see the image pretty clearly, then I feel like that's a good tell that people who do have issues seeing various colors will have a better time understanding your image too. That's not something that I always think about, which I probably should, but it is something in more recent years that I have been trying to be mindful of. So let's look at some of these pages that I've done in the past with all their colors stripped away. And I'm gonna ask your opinions out there. What do you think? Did I successfully create contrast with the colors? Did I fail at that? Are there ones that look a little bit better? And you know, have you have you ever done this test yourself to check your own color usage? It's a helpful trick, in my opinion, for those who are unsure or amateur like me with using color. So back to the cover of On the Beach, I've been working with a pretty vibrant, highly saturated color palette for the last few one shots. And for this comic, I wanted to kind of tone things down a bit without hopefully making it look washed out. I don't want it to look too washed out, but I do want the colors to be a little less sat saturated. So I thought a pastel color palette throughout the entire one shot might be fun to try. Here we are. I've been picking softer hues for my colors, and I think this cover came out pretty cool looking. I also, you know... <laughs> I, I chose to make the Cadillac pink one because I was only referencing the co cover and kind of not satirizing it, but you know, kind of paying homage to it. But the song Pink Cadillac kind of came to mind and clearly the car that is buried, I can't tell exactly what model it is, but it's clearly got tail fins and that reminded me of Pink Cadillac. Kind of got me thinking about like how a lot of cars in the 50s were like ice cream mint green or light pink, those kind of colors. So I, I kind of took my cue from that and went went to town on the rest of the page making things pastel. But yeah, let's let's check and see, does it pass the contrast test? I mean, I think it does. I think it looks pretty good in black and white. I think you can kind of tell. I mean, of course the characters are a little bit small and off in the background, but you can still kind of see every everything and tell that there's like contrast between the details. So I think I think I'm gonna call this a success. I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back. I don't always do that, but yeah, that's all I got to say about this. It's gonna be a shorter video. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Welcome to the new subscribers. Next week, I'm talking about how to make your own zine, how to print them at home. So if you're interested in that, stop on in on Wednesday. I'm out of here. Peace and love. Very well, and keep on trucking.